let's dive into the world of permutations with restrictions, where logic meets possibility. How many different passwords can be made from the characters A, B, 7, 8, and 9? Following one important rule, the password must begin with two letters and end with three digits. The longer method is to try and list out all the possible permutations. We could start the password with A, then B, and list out all six ways that the digits can be arranged. Or we could start the password with B, then A, and list out all six ways that the digits can be arranged. We'll end up with 12 possible passwords. A tree diagram could also be used. However, the quickest method is the box method approach. The password should have five characters, so we need five spaces. The password must begin with letters, so for the first slot, we have two choices, A or B, so we write two. Now, after placing any of the letters in the first slot, there is only one choice of letter left for the second spot, so we write one. Let's move to the digits. We have three digits that we need to use to fill the last three positions. So in the next slot, we have three choices, seven, eight, or nine, so we put three. Whichever digit is placed there, only two digits now remain, so we write two. And then there is only one choice of digit left for the final slot. So we put one in the box. To get the total number of possible passwords, we multiply all the numbers in the box to get 12, so 12 possible passwords. Let's look at a variation to the problem just completed. Suppose instead we want to form a five-character password with these conditions. The first two characters must be any two letters of the alphabet. The last three characters must be any three digits from zero to nine, and repetition is allowed, meaning it's possible for characters to be the same. For example, A and A are allowed to be the first two characters in the password, and so on. As long as the overall password is different for each permutation. Let's use the box method to figure out how many five-character passwords we can create. The first two characters must be letters from the alphabet, and the last three must be digits. There are 26 letters in the alphabet, and each of the first two boxes can have any letter, so we have 26 choices for each. For the last three characters, which must be digits, we have 10 choices for each, since we can use any digit from 0 to 9. So we multiply the numbers in the box to get 676,000 different passwords. Now what if repetitions are not allowed? There are 26 letters in the alphabet, and each of the first two boxes must have a letter, so we have 26 choices for the first. Once a letter is placed in the first box, only 25 choices would remain for the second box. For the last three characters, which must be digits, we have 10 choices for the first, then nine for the second, and eight for the last. Multiply the numbers in the box to get 468,000 passwords when characters in the password cannot be repeated. Let's try a different problem. How many even numbers can be formed using all five digits below? A number is even if it ends with an even digit. From the set of numbers given, the even digits are 4 and 6. So the last digit must be either 4 or 6. So we have two choices for the last box. Now, once one digit from the 5 is used, four digits now remain. So for the first box, we have four choices. So now two digits are placed, which leaves us with three choices for the next box. For the other box, we have two choices and then only one choice for the last box. To get the number of even numbers, we multiply the values in the boxes to get 48 even numbers. 
we have seven distinct letters and we're told the arrangement must start and end with a vowel. Our task, to find how many such arrangements are possible. Out of the letters given, A, E and I are vowels. The rest are consonants. Now, we want the arrangement to start and end with a vowel, so we fix the first and last positions. They must be chosen from the three vowels. For the first position, we have three choices, A, E or I. After selecting one for the first spot, we're left with two vowels to choose from for the last position. Once we've placed the vowels at both ends, that leaves us with five letters to fill the other spaces in the box. So five choices for the next empty space. So now three letters are placed, leaving four choices, then three choices, then two choices. After six letters are placed, there should be only one choice left for the final box. Multiply the values in the box and we get 720 unique arrangements with vowels at the start and at the end. Five girls and three boys are to form a line. The line must start with a girl and end with a boy. How many ways can this line be formed? There are five girls to choose from for the first position. And there are three boys to choose from for the last position. After choosing the first and last positions, there are six persons left to arrange in the middle. This can be done in six factorial ways, since there are six choices for the second spot, five choices for the third spot, and so on. So multiply the values in the box to get the number of ways this line can be formed, which is 10,800 ways. How many ways can the letters in statistics be arranged if the letter T must be at both ends. The word statistics has 10 letters and the given restriction is the first and last letters must be T. Since the letter T must be at both ends, we fix the first and last positions with T's. This leaves us with eight letters to arrange in the middle eight positions. Since two T's are used, we have one T left, three S's, two I's, one A, and one C. So the number of arrangements for the remaining letters is not just eight factorial. Remember, we have to divide by the repeated items or else we'll be double counting. So our solution is eight factorial divided by three factorial for the S, that's there three times, and divide also by two factorial for the I that's there twice. So we get 40,320 over 12, which gives us 3,360 unique arrangements. By the way, in case you are wondering, we didn't need to explicitly show the number of choices for T at the ends because the T's were fixed in place. You have to be careful as switching T's around would lead to double counting since they are the exact same items. As opposed to say, for example, three separate characters like A, B, and C. You could have A at the start and B at the end, or B at the start and A at the end, and so on. So the calculation focused only on the permutations of the inside letters, taking into account the repetitions of the S's, I's, and the single T. In the next video, we'll look at restrictions where specific characters in the arrangement must be beside each other. Thanks for watching. Remember to like and subscribe to Adobe Math Lab for more powerful math lessons. See you in the next one.